Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about porcupines for a specific reason, and I will dispel a specific myth on whether or not it's true if porcupines can shoot their quills. If you want that answer, just forward to the end. But let me tell you why I got thinking about this. I live in Utah. Utah's, uh, in Utah, porcupines are very common in our mountains and even in some of our deserts, as long as there's certain conditions. I'm surprised on the famous Antelope Island in the Great Salt Lake, there is a thriving porcupine community, and that's a very much a desert island. So, um, but anyways, the other night I was up Big Conwood Canyon, and it was sunset, and I saw a young porcupine out grazing. It's the time of year they're coming out and they're starting to eat, and he was grazing. So I went over and took a look at him, and I, I filmed him, and I posted a few videos on him, and had some friends reach out to me, and they said, well, aren't you worried? Aren't you, weren't you worried he was going to shoot his quills at you? And I thought... What? And it got me thinking, I'm like, you know what? Most people, sadly, have never encountered a porcupine, even though they're everywhere. So why don't I teach you a little bit about them and dispel that myth? So let's talk about porcupines. Porcupines are rodents. Uh, so that puts them, they're, they're in the order rodentia. So that's putting them in there also with like squirrels and mice and rats and even capybaras, which are the biggest rodent alive today. Um, one of the, 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 now the interesting thing about rodents is they have such a broad range. You normally think of a rodent as just kind of, remember, remember they have these sharp teeth. So what we're going to take a look, um, this is the skull of a beaver, which is another type of rodent. And one thing I want to show you about the teeth, one of them is kind of broken off here, but the teeth of rodents grow forever. So this one is loose and I'll show you, see how it just kind of falls. It just kind of keeps growing forever. Uh, and so it's a, it's a conveyor belt of tooth that keeps growing, growing, growing. Rodents must constantly chisel down their own teeth. And if they don't, the teeth will eventually pierce through their own skull and kill them. So it's very important. So rodents are well known for eating very dense things like bones and antler. And in fact, it's one of the things we see with porcupines, both in America and old world porcupine species will eat uh, bones, oddly then that's because they have to wear down those teeth. So by the way, this skull, this is about, this again, this is a beaver, but this is about the same size and shape of a porcupine. Uh, in fact, if you were a paleontologist millions of years from now and you saw a beaver skeleton and a porcupine skeleton, you would not be able to tell much of a difference. You'd probably re, uh, you know, construct them as looking about the same. One's aquatic and has a big old flat tail, uh, and, and, and lives this weird aquatic lifestyle. The other one uh, lives in trees and has these huge spikes all over it. Very different animals, they're both rodents. Uh, but I, I'm gonna show you actually how big some of these guys got. This is the biggest uh, prehistoric rodent that we had locally. This is called Castoroides. This is the giant, this is a, like a 250, 300 pound beaver from the Ice Age. You compare this guy to this and it's uh, no contest. But again, those are rodents that are closely related to porcupines, but it's not what this video is about. So let's get back to the porcupines themselves. The porcupines are rodents. They've been around for millions of years doing their thing. They have quills on their backs. Some of them have them all over. There's several different species. I think there's like 20 species of porcupines all over the world. They are an old world and a new world species, but the quills are made out of hair. Same hair as your hair, and also the same hair as your fingernails. That chemical is called keratin. Keratin is used to make horn. So uh, you think of like a ram's horn or a rhinoceros horn that's made out of hair. Uh, and so are your fingernails and so is your actual hair. When you look at a porcupine, they do have fluffy soft hair, but they also have quills that are made out of hair, but they're stiff. Now, when porcupines are born, all their hairs are soft. But what will happen is, is over time that those will harden and grow. And all of those quills, just like any hair, they will kind of molt off. I, I guess they shed. I'm, I'm a falconer, so I'm used to the term molting for feathers coming off. But they shed, right? Hairs fall out. They grow for a while and they fall out. Same thing with quills. So porcupine quills just fall out on their own, you know, just willy-nilly anywhere throughout their life. But um, the quills themselves, uh, they're actually also um, kind of a defense mechanism. So those quills, so on any species of porcupine, 
if they're threatened, they're going to, you know, which is, which is a fear response. We assume they can control it, but it's a fear response. If you're scared, you get goosebumps, right? And every little hair, there's a tiny little muscle attached to each hair, and it makes those hairs stand up. What good does that do us? Not much, but it's true of all mammals. You think about a cat. If a cat gets scared and all those hairs stand on end, the cat looks bigger. So it is a natural thing for hairs to on mammals to stand out. It's just a stimulus response as far as we can tell. Maybe some animals can control it, but it seems to be very much a stimulus response. And you look bigger, you look scarier. And a porcupine definitely looks bigger and scarier when they poof out all their hairs, both their soft hairs and their quills. But then you have the added benefit of those quills are covering a bigger area that is more dangerous to an attacker. So then what happens? Well, I guess we'll jump right to it. They cannot shoot their quills, not at all. Uh, the quills are attached to the body, but the tip of each quill, I'll, I'll show you some Im images uh, through an electron microscope. They have micro serrations. So if you get stabbed by a quill, like if you bump into them or if you attack them, or they could just like turn around and back into you if you are being really aggressive, then that quill will hook into you and then their muscle goes and releases it. So they do not shoot it. They cannot fire their quills, but it, they just all come out. The second you touch their, their body instantly releases, and, which is two part because that's good defense mechanism, but also you don't want to still be attached to your attacker. You want to do the damage and walk away. Same thing with a stingray, right? A stingray, stinger, stings you and it pulls out. You don't want to stay attached to your attacker. So this is a very good survival strategy. It's very unique, very unusual, and it works really well. Now, American porcupines, their quills are, you know, the big ones are a few inches long. But in the old world, like, for example, in Africa, African porcupines are huge, and their quills can be, I mean, enormous, you know, like 12 inches long. And their quills, they, they, the shorter ones they have are thicker and deadlier, and the longer ones are still pokey, but they're more bristly and more hair-like. So they, they cover a range. Something like that in Africa, uh, that's something that, you know, they're dealing with much larger predatory animals. And so they have to have a bigger defense system in order to survive. But across the board, um, all porcupines, they do have quills and none of them can fire the quills. All of them, the quills release. If you get stabbed, they pull out. And you see it often with animals, especially like dogs. I uh, even had an eagle come into rehab where it had attacked a porcupine, a young eagle, and it had, and you know, the rehabbers got all the quills out of the feet and put it on some antibiotics for a few days and set it free. Um, it's, it's a very effective defense mechanism, but again, they're just hairs. And with humanity, anytime you have something in repeat, a lot of something, a lot of shells on the beach, you're gonna like, well, we could use these. Maybe we could make them into jewelry or necklaces or a trade item. You always have that. And in, in the New World, Native Americans saw the value of porcupine quills. Now, our porcupine quills, again, they're only a few inches long, but because there's an abundance of them and they're fairly uniform in size, that allows for some artistic expression. And Native Americans would boil them or steam them, flatten them, and then dye them with natural earth pigments, and then would do what is called quill work. This is the precursor to uh, bead work, you know. Um, Native Americans did have beads, but they were rare and they were special. And each bead is gonna be a slightly different shape. And once glass beads came over from the old world, then it's like, oh, we can do amazing bead work. It's much easier than doing quill work. But to do quill work, you have to, you again, you have to steam or boil the, 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 uh, the quills, flatten them, dye them what colors you want, let the dye dry out, and then you have these special patterns you do where you weave them. And it takes a lot of work. I've done a lot of it. Uh, it's very valuable because it takes so much work and so much thought to do, and you don't get very far with each quill where uh, beads, you can just bead, 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 bead. It's super easy. But Native Americans made the absolute most beautiful things. It was a sign of status and wealth and beauty. Again, if you had a fine quill work uh, you know, on your shirt or on an item that you owned, maybe a bag or part of a saddle, you know, medicine wheels. Uh, and even today, they are gifts that are sometimes given in, in a diplomatic way. It's like, hey, this is something that's very valuable. It took a lot of work to do. So it's interesting that something that was 
I don't, deadly is an extreme, but something that can do a lot of damage and is meant as kind of like a self-defense weapon has been turned around and been used by Native Americans to make something so beautiful. But again, the point of this video is can the uh, porcupines fire their quills? They categorically cannot do that at all. No porcupine can. And I believe that this myth came about as, uh, because people all the time ask me this and I'm like, why, why did somebody tell you that? And I think what it is, is people know porcupines have quills and then you'll see like maybe a dog, an image of a dog, and its face is covered with quills. It's been poked all up, and it's like, and there's some sort of a cognitive connection that is wrong, that is made, that it's like, how do they get from the porcupine to the face of the dog? Well, they must have shot it at them. It's like, no, the dog came up and was rah, 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 getting and got a face full of quills. Uh, so again, they cannot do that. But again, absolutely amazing and interesting creatures. If you ever see them, don't be afraid of them. They don't come after you. Uh, just give them some space. Don't overstress them out. They're kind of dumpy animals. They can't move very fast. And they can run, but it's very taxing on them. Uh, they have a very, um, almost, their rear legs to their tails almost webbed so that it will swagger that tail with all those spines uh, around. And it really slows them down. It's a very taxing, a lethargic gait. They're not meant to run fast. They're, they're quite destructive, um, just like beavers. They will chew apart just about anything. I had a friend uh, who was running a, a summer camp one time, and they had a yurt that they that some of the staff was living in, and it was on this frame of all these like four by four posts, and the porcupines were just eating apart the <laughs> the the frame for the yurt and eating the door itself. They sent me videos of them eating the door. Uh, they'll eat a lot of live plants as well as a lot of dead plants. They will graze as I showed you the other day, but they can be quite destructive. Uh, so sometimes they have to be removed and transported to another area if they've keyed in on a site and they're just destroying all the trees in, 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 in a set yard or, or destroying property and eating houses. <laughs> it's kind of wild. But again, they have teeth. And again, the teeth are just like this on a beaver. They are absolutely identical to these teeth. And these teeth, they just keep growing and growing and growing throughout life. And uh, they just, they never run out. They stay, keep them razor sharp, and that's what they do. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the truth about porcupines. And um, if you haven't already, if you could hit subscribe, I very much appreciate it. And as always, just always remember, life is a gift. So never stop learning and never stop exploring. We'll see you next time.